the processing of all these operations and it has to give output to the users in a within a specified time that is called as a response time if there is any exception arising out of it everything is checked and verified by the tester the completed verification plan will be reviewed with the design team to identify issues before finalizing the plan verification time shall be reduced when similar concepts are conducted in sequence Hello and warm welcome to one and all it is Dr Ravikumar YB Department of Computer Science Vidyashram First Grade College Mysuru the Temple of Excellence In today's session you will be taught about the design verification In my previous session I was talking about the design verification and validation the validation and verification process was explained let me take you into the details of design verification in today's session design verification is a method or method to confirm if the output of a designed software product meets the input specifications by examining and providing the evidence please mention these words in the examination what is the meaning of what is design verification then these sentences must be there that is input specifications by examining and providing evidence to the client in the form of the output of a designed software product is called as the design verification that must be there the goal of this design verification process during software development is ensuring that the designed software product is same as the specified that means we are going to ensure whether the requirements are same as the output produced by the developers that ensuring is very very important and that means the requirements of a client is properly met by the developer is going to be ensured in this case we have the design input design input is any physical and performance requirement that is used as the basis for designing purpose is the meaning of this physical and performance when any input is given to the system it has to produce an output in certain specified time that means the response time of a system must be good enough to mitigate the problems of the existing functionality of a system that means it has to work out with the processing of all these operations and it has to give output to the users in a within a specified time that is called as a response time design output is the result of each design phase that is from one module to another module what is the output produced and at the end of the total design effort the final design output is the basis for device master record then we have difference between design verification and design validation verification indicates that whether suppose if there is a requirement r1 r2 r3 these are the requirements of a client then developer checks whether r1 is met properly r2 met properly r2 is done properly all these verification are done by the developer as well as the testing team now what is the meaning of validation whether all the requirements are met and working according to the requirements of the client that is called as a validation if that is the case there are always misconceptions between verification and validation so please don't be in that misconception that these are the different activities which are performed at every stage of development process which are those let me take you into this design verification includes is a process where the actual design output should be same as the expected design output what is the client expecting the output the same thing is there which satisfies the specification of the product that is called as a verification in case of this validation whether the design issues are resolved properly and everything required by the client is working according to him 
that is called as a validation. Validating, that means what? Design validation is used to define that the final design is as per the expectation of user needs. That is called as a validation, working properly. Then design verification includes unit and primary integration level testing. That means verification requires unit testing and integration testing. Design validation asks, did you design the right product? That means the right product is designed or not. That is called as a verification and a validation. Did you design the right product? Yes, we designed the right product. How do you say that we, de we designed the right product? By validating all of the requirements of a client. Whether the requirement R1 is working properly, whether requirement R2 is working properly, requirement R3 is working properly, that is called as the validation. If any one of the requirement is not working properly, then we say that it is not validated, then it has to be refined further from the beginning. So the certain aspects of the design validation can be accomplished during the design verification, but design verification is not a substitute for validation. It is not a substitution. Verification is a, not a substitution for validation. But R1 is met, R1 is the requirement. R2 is met, R2 is the requirement of a client. R3 is met, R3 is the requirement. That is called as a verification. But in the documentation, we have come up with few requirements of a client that is verified here, that's all. But not yet validated. So it is not a substitute for validation. So verification is not a substitute for validation. If that is the case, design verification can be conducted on the individual module or on the completed system under the conditions. That means what? Design validation follows the successful design verification. That means once it is verified, the validation process begins. But in this case, individual modules along with those once they are integrated together, the complete system is tested. That is called as a verification. In case of design validation, shall be conducted under a specified condition as per the user requirement. That means if there is any exception arising out of it, everything is checked and verified by the tester. Design verification may use static techniques. It includes system inspections, analysis and formal verification testing activities. In case of system verification, in case of validation, Validation consists of final report, test execution results that are reviewed, approved and signed. Validation requires a signature of the developer to state that it is working perfectly according to the requirements. That has to be given by the developer. That means the ensure, they have to ensure that the test execution results are according to the requirements of a stakeholder or a client. That is the meaning of this. These documents are stored for future references because if he comes with few more modifications, they can do so with by referring to the documents. Identification and preparation. Design verification process includes, the first one is identification and preparation. During the development stage of a specification, the identification of a verification activity is done parallel. That means during the type of time of development, development involves coding. During the time of coding, the specification specified by the stakeholder is considered here. And then the verification is done at the time of developers testing. The testing is also called as a unit testing. This enables the designer to make sure that the specification is verifiable by using the unit testing. So a test engineer can start a detailed test plan and procedure called as an integration testing. Integration testing is done by the tester at the later point of time. So any changes in the specification should be communicated back to the developer so that the developer understands that this is the requirement of a client which has not been met so that those changes can be incorporated before being delivered to the client. So that is the main thing here. 
identifying the best approach to conduct verification, design measurement methods, required resources, tools and facilities. If that is the case, the completed verification plan will be reviewed with the design team to identify issues before finalizing the plan. A test case plan is prepared. A test plan is prepared to indicate that all the requirements are met or not. That means the identification and this one preparation is done. Planning is the next important activity. In this case, planning for verification is a concurrent activity with core and development teams. Please note that is a concurrent activity with core and development teams. This occurs throughout the project life cycle, right from the analysis to the testing phases. It follows. This will be updated as and when any changes are made to the design inputs. That means if there is any suggestions comes out, those suggestions can be incorporated in the form of a design process. Then the design is considered for implementing, that is during the time of coding. This process is repeated from the, in the form of a cycle to understand that all the requirements are meet, met by the client, uh, by the developer. During this phase, the software or system under test will be documented in scope. Then preliminary test plan and test plan refinement are made at this stage. What is the meaning of test plan here? The test plan captures the critical milestone reduced, reducing the project risk. That means, suppose if there is any requirement which is not yet met by the developer, that is a risk that has to be reduced, that has to be reduced by considering the test plan, test cases that is considered then. then we have similar type of automated testing and manual testing and all those things. Let us consider the tools for automated testing. Tools, test environment, development strategy and identifying the requirements through the inspection or analysis is called as an automated testing. Then moving on to the development, we have the test case development will coincide with SDLC methodology implemented by the project team. A variety of test methods are identified during this stage. That means test case one, test case two, test case three, so on like that is carried out to identify any risks involved in it. The design inputs must be developed during the sim in the simplest verification activities which are unambiguous and verifiable. That means very accurate and verifiable. Verification time shall be reduced when similar concepts are conducted in sequence. That means replica of the same thing is not done in that. So even the output of one test can be used as input for subsequent tests. That means when one of the module produces an output, the same output can be given as input to the next module. So that is also considered here. Execution, planning, development, execution. Execution is the next step. In this case, the test procedures are created during the development phase is executed in accordance with the test plan, strictly following them with verification activity. That is the meaning of execution. Whatever the requirements suggested in the development team is executed in the form of the test phase. That means the test plan. If any invalid results occur, that means if there is any exception occurs, that has to be noted and it has to be brought back to the changes according to the requirement of a stakeholder that is documented in the document in the document. Then reports, this is the final step of this design verification process, identification, preparation, then planning, development, execution, then reports. This is the last activity. This activity is performed at the end of each phase of the verification execution. The design verification report gives the detailed summary of verification results, which includes the configuration management, test results for each type of testing and issues found during the verification activity. What are the different types of issues obtained during the time of verification activity are all noted in a document and then it is released for the next refinement.
that is called as a report. So with this, I'm concluding this session. Thank you very much. Thank you one and all.